Hey guys, it's me, E, and welcome to day four or five of week two of uh, Experimental Month. This is Gaming Week, and we are back in Minecraft. You know how I said in the last episode where I played Toho that uh, I'm just going to play Civ Five um, if I could have enough time to do that? Uh, well, I tried playing Hearts of Iron 4 instead because I play the game a lot more and I like it a lot more. I was trying to do a casual run-through. Where I was trying to make Mussolini great again and reconquer the Roman Empire. As Italy, it was a casual run. I did a lot. I conquered Spain. I conquered France. It took three days. I recorded three sessions, each of them way over an hour long. And by the time I was ready to export them over to uh, M side so that it could be edited down into a YouTube video, I realized that none of my commentary was exported. So that means all you were watching is just silent game footage. And I was not about to have another day long run through of Hearts of Iron 4. And this was literally at the last minute. So I just had to record something for the day that this is being released. And so this is what I had to do. So anyway, as you can see, uh, we have a dark oak door with a wall in the vast nothingness of green. And the reason we aren't at the redstone house over here right now is because today we are building a lockable single door. Uh, on the house it has a lockable double door and in its command structure for that is slightly different than that of a single door because you have to take into account two different coordinates rather than just one. So this one will be much simpler to try and troubleshoot right now. So what we're going to first do obviously is give ourselves a command block. Oops, so I should give command block. Alright, so what should happen is that the, um, when the player walks up to a door, uh, a block should detect when the player is near the door, and then it should ask a question if the player is holding a key or if they aren't. If they aren't, the door should stay closed, and if they are, the door should open. So first we're going to execute, alright, F3, uh, 164, 64, 112. All right, so this will be a repeat command block and will always be active and you will execute unless entity at p x equals 164.5, y equals 64, and z equals 112.5. The reason we have a 0 0.5 is because uh, if you use x if you just use uh, whole numbers, that would put all of the, the coordinate on uh, one corner of the block. And we want it in the middle of the block. So we just put it halfway. We just add an extra 0.5 to the X and Z coordinates. So let's close that. And let's add a comparator. Hopefully this works. And it doesn't. That's odd. Okay, let's, okay, let's see if this fixes it. Let's add a distance. Uh, distance modifier thingamajig. So distance will detect how will detect how far away the player is from your specified coordinates. So let's just set the distance to be uh, double dot. Uh, let's go with two. So what this will detect is that if the player, unless the player is within uh, two blocks of the coordinates we have specified up here then the command will fire. And so, there we go. Now that we've specified a certain distance, the comparator turns on. Oh, I think I know why the reason why uh, it didn't fire in the first place. You see, in the original thing without the distance, uh, the command was detecting for when the player's uh, x, y, and z coordinates were exactly 164.5, 64, and 112.5. And so, obviously, that is never going to happen, at least with human with just human movement. So we have to add a distance modifier in order to account for human error. So now, as you can see, the command block is firing, but when we walk up to it, uh, the comparator turns off, which is what we want. So let's put a block there, and let's add in a temporary block. Normally, we'd want to place a wool block to signify what type of um, command that we are working with. Uh, this is why I have yellow wool all under our toggling light switch from the last Minecraft episode. Uh, yellow wool to me signifies that something has to do with lights. But 
For now, we don't have to use um, wool since we are just troubleshooting. So let's put a redstone torch here. And so what I've created is essentially uh, a flip, a, pa a redstone signal flip. I'm not sure what the technical term is, it is for it, but it's just a flip to me. What this does is it takes a redstone signal input and it turns it into no redstone signal input. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put in a command block. And so this execute command block will uh, execute if this will execute if the entity at p uh, at p will detect the nearest player. Obviously, if you're working on this with a in a multiplayer server, the, the commands might be you might want to toy around with them a bit more to get them to function properly. Uh, but I want a single player world and I have no friends, so this is going to work perfectly fine just for me. So execute if entity at p, and we're going to use the nbt modifier, and we're going to go with selected item. So selected item, uh, let's have the id be something. So this is going to be our key detector. It will execute if, if the player is holding the key. So let's go with the, the typical Minecraft key. Let's go with the Minecraft tripwire hook. Tripwire underscore hook. Let me just check to see if that's correct. And that is. So here we have this. Let's put this right here so that we can put a comparator down next to it. Oh, and uh, you need to have redstone. There we go. So this will only fire if if uh, this block that detects when the player's range uh, is turned off and this redstone torch, thus this redstone torch is turned on. If we had it as always active, uh, let me grab a tripwire hook, then this thing would always detect when we're holding the tripwire hook, which is not what we want. We only want it to detect when the player is in range of the door. So we just put it as a need redstone. So now, as you can see, when I hold open, when I hold the key, uh, the command block fires. And when I have the key in my inventory but not selected, it doesn't fire. And when I don't have it at all, it doesn't fire either. All right, so now that we have that, let us add in our other command blocks. And so this is where my uh, planning for what this door is going to be like comes into play a little bit. So we're going to add in a chain command block. So we're going to do slash set block or slash fill uh, 164, 64, uh, 112, to 164, 65, 112, uh, air. All right, so now what this will do is that if the player is holding the key and they're in range of the door, then the door will disappear. So, nope, let's grab a tripwire hook. So as you can see, uh, the door disappears. All right, now we obviously need a function to determine if the player if the player doesn't have a key, and so the door will stay closed. This is where my planning comes into play. So we're going to instead put uh, some command blocks on top of this thing. So we're going to set you as conditional, and we're going to set block instead of fill. The reason is because we're going to use the power of retexturing in order to assist in creating this unlockable door. So we're going to just fill it with a temporary block that we're never going to use in the future. Um, so let's use a dead coral block. Uh, nobody ever uses those when building stuff. All right, so do that. And as for you, you will set block that to a um, dead, let's go with uh, bubble coral since that's the next one, and you will be conditional. And there we go. Now we have a constantly filling uh, thingy. And so when the player tries to break this down, they can't. Oops, that's a problem. So when they're at the door, they can break it down because this command is no longer functioning. So the solution to this is to add an an execute block, which will execute uh, unless 
unless they have the keys selected. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to put these same commands here. And so now if the player walks up to the door, they still can't break the blocks and get through, no matter how hard they try. Oh, well, I guess I can get through with that, but if the player is in survival mode, they will never be able to get through due to damage. And so if we have a tripwire hook and we go here, it turns to air and the door fills in behind us. Now, what I mean by retexturing is that um, we're off camera, I will retexture these two dead coral blocks to look like a dark oak door. Uh, if you wanted to build a simple locking door, you could easily do it with just one command block, a comparator, and an iron door. You can easily find a, tu a tutorial for that online. It's super easy to build, but I don't want to use an iron door because it looks ugly. I want to use a dark oak door, something that looks more like it belongs in a modern house. And so dark oak doors obviously can't lock because they're wooden doors. So my solution is just to use blocks that have been retextured. So this bubble coral block will just be retextured to the top of the dark oak door, and this uh, brain coral block will be retextured to be the bottom of the door. That way the player literally can't open the door no matter how hard they right click. Because even if we did have it filling a door that is closed, the player could easily just glitch in by rapidly opening and closing it. Uh, anyway, so now that we have that done, it's time to add little bits and details to it. So I want to add a message prompt to tell the player what they need to do. Because as of right now, if we have the texture back loaded, you just see this door looking thing. They'd walk up to it, they try to open it, and they'd be like, why isn't the door opening? What do I need to do in order to get through this thing? So obviously we need to add a prompt to tell the player what to do. So we're going to add in a new uh, execute command block. Actually, uh, we're going to add in the same execute command block, except it's going to be an impulse block. Uh, the reason this is, is because we only want our message to fire once. If we put it on top of this execute command tower that uh, has that executes when the player is not holding the key, it would fire every single tick because the player doesn't have the key. And so the chat log would just fill up with messages of, you need a key. And that is completely unnecessary. The player only needs to see one prompt and they will get the idea. So we'll instead just use the same exact command block, except it's just a uh, impulse block that fires only once. And so let's grab a chain command block, not an NBT but a regular chain command block that's empty. This will be conditional. And we'll do um, slash uh, play sound. Sorry, that slipped my mind for a moment there. I don't know why. So let's go with Minecraft. Um, What should be a sound for a door not working? You know, let's just, let's just go. Let's just go with uh, something random. We'll go with the villager no sound. It's, it's, they're saying no, it's intuitive. Uh, so let's put it at the player, uh, at P, and we're going to do it at the coordinates of where we want the sound to play. That's the mistake I, that's one of the mistakes I made last video with the toggleable light switch. I just did toda toda toda, which plays it at the command blocks location, uh, not the player's location. So you'll have to fix that if you want to rebuild uh, my redstone contraption from that episode. But anyway, uh, we're going to go with 164, uh, 64, 112. That is the coordinates of our door. And let's play at a volume of 1. So now we walk up to the door. We get uh, no sound effect. Alright, that's nice. And now we also want to display a message. And so we're going to do so much say, You need a key to unlock this door. So you will be conditional. And so now we get a message in chat that says, you need a key to unlock this door. Let me just clear the log. And as you can see, we get the message. Uh, but at the moment, we just have this weird at symbol telling us we need a key to unlock this door. So I'm just going to spice things up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to grab an anvil and rename this command block. The thing about command blocks and the say command is if you rename them uh, to a different name, 
uh, it will dis the chat logs will display as that new name saying whatever is in the command block. So we're going to just name this smart house for now. All right, and now when we walk up to the door, no, instead of just a weird at symbol, it says the smart house says you need a key to unlock this door. Uh, you can actually uh, do a whole bunch of different stuff with the message. Uh, you can change colors, you can change uh, format, bold, italic, strike through, a uh, whole bunch of different stuff using the, I think, the tell raw command. Uh, but that's a whole different thing to get into, and you can find plenty of other good tutorials online. The internet is a very valuable resource when uh, redstone troubleshooting. And so you should always consult the internet for when you're working with this stuff, because chances are somebody at least made a smaller version of what you're trying to do. So anyway, now that we have that, let's just add in another sound effect for our uh, unlocking door. So let's just do slash play sound. Uh, let's go with a piston. Nope, let's go with block.piston. Uh, let's go with um, contract. Yeah, that sounds okay. Uh, we're gonna play it at the newest player, uh, 164, um, 64, 112, and a volume of one. So now when we have a tripwire hook, the door opens with a piston sound effect. Okay. The problem is that we have a double piston sound effect tailing at the end. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to hear it uh, if, because last time my game volume was too low. If it's since we guys saw that. So yeah, when we, when we back out, uh, while holding the tripwire hook, the piston sound goes off twice, and that's because um, uh, it's in between, like uh, it's in between like um, this comparator turning on, and this command firing, and this redstone torch also being on and also firing. So that that's why the piston sound effect fires twice. So the solution to this, uh, the intuitive solution at least, is to just do what we did with the uh, uh, other command. Uh, thingy, the other command chain. Uh, we'll just add an impulse command block that detects that, and we'll just uh, do that. So now, when we have a tripwire hook, and the door opens, and there we go. We have no uh, double piston sound at the end. We don't have a piston sound um, once the door closes back up, but I'll try to fix that in the future. Um, another problem we have is that uh, the piston sound effect doesn't happen when the player walks up to the door, realizes they need a key, mouse over the key, and then walk through. The piston sound effect doesn't fire. So that's another thing to fix in the future. Uh, you can make it part of uh, this command chain right here. Uh, you can make it uh, in the ground, possibly near the door, so like it detects when the player is nearby and it will play a sound effect. I don't think that would actually work though, now that I think about it. But whatever, that's a thing to fix off camera. Right now what we have is a very nice, um, very simple, um, lock lockable single door command chain. Uh, very nice, very compact, considering I thought of this like today at the very last minute because I'm recording this on a Tuesday and, and we'll have no time to edit this. But um, Anyway, yes, as I said before, a very nice, very compact design, very simple. And um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. As I said before, Emma appreciates it. I appreciate it. It means you can make more stuff like this in the future to take a break from constantly having to think up of new ideas for music stuff. And so this will be a nice thing to take our minds off of things and stuff. Anyway, uh, I hope that either... Tomorrow or the day after, I'll release um, a board game vid where I do some quarantine board games with uh, my friends online. Um, that's since you guys weren't able to see the Hearts Around 4 video, but that's not a guarantee. So this might be the last video of Gaming Week. But as always, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for next week when we start releasing our GarageBand remixes. And thank you for watching. Okay, goodbye.